So far in React, we've only learned one way to update the UI. We call react-dom.render to change the rendered output. And previously, we used an example of a clock that rendered every second. In this video, we'll learn how to make the clock component truly reusable and encapsulated. It will set up its own timer and update itself every second. And we'll accomplish this by using state and lifecycle. And we can start by encapsulating the clock. First, we'll define the layout of the clock separate from the tick function. We send the date to the clock through props. But we're still re-rendering the DOM. Ideally, we want to write this once and have the clock update itself. To implement this, we'll need to add state to the clock component. State is similar to props, but it is private and fully controlled by the component. There are two ways to implement state into a component. We can convert the component into a class component, or we can use hooks within the existing function component. I feel that it's very important for you to understand how to do this both ways. Class components are the original and old way of doing this. Hooks are the new, cool way of implementing state. There are no plans to remove classes from React, so you're going to run across both class and function-based stateful components. So first we'll convert this function into a class. We'll create an ES6 class with the same name that extends react.component. This is just a normal JavaScript class. And now we'll add a single empty method called render. Now we'll move the body of the function into the render method. Next, replace props with this.props in the render body. Clock is now defined as a class rather than a function. The render method will be called each time an update happens. But as long as we render clock into the same DOM node, only a single instance of the clock class will be used. This lets us use additional features such as local state and lifecycle methods. Now let's convert this from using props to state. First, replace this.props.date with this.state.date in the render method. Now add a class constructor that assigns the initial this.state. Again, this is just normal JavaScript. So if you're not familiar with ES6 classes and constructors, I have a short video that could help you out. Note that we pass props to the base constructor. Class components should always call the base constructor with props. Now remove the date prop from the clock element. We'll add the timer code back to the component itself later. Next, we'll make the clock set up its own timer and update itself every second. We'll do this by adding lifecycle methods to the class. In applications with many components, it's very important to free up resources taken by the components when they are destroyed. We want to set up a timer whenever the clock is rendered into the DOM for the first time. This is called mounting in React. We also want to clear the timer whenever the DOM produced by the clock is removed. This is called unmounting in React. We can declare special methods on the component class to run some code when the component mounts and unmounts. These are called component did mount and component will unmount. These methods are called lifecycle methods. The component did mount method runs after the component output has been rendered to the DOM. This is a good place to set up our timer. Note how we save the timer ID right on this, this.timer ID, while this.props is set up by React itself and this.state has a special meaning, you're free to add additional fields to the class manually if you need to store something that doesn't participate in the global data flow. Next, we'll tear down the timer in the component will unmount lifecycle method. Finally, we'll implement a method called tick that the clock component will run every second. It will use this.setState to schedule updates to the component's local state. Now the clock ticks every second. Let's quickly recap what's going on and the order in which the methods are called. When clock is passed to react-dom.render, React calls the constructor of the clock component. Since the clock needs to display the current time, it initializes this.state with an object including the current time. We'll later update the state. React then calls the clock component's render method. This is how React learns what should be displayed on the screen. React then updates the DOM to match the clock's render output. When the clock output is inserted into the DOM, React calls the component did mount lifecycle method. Inside it, the clock component asks the browser to set up a timer to call the component's tick method once every second. Every second, the browser calls the tick method. Inside it, the clock component schedules a UI update by calling setState with an object containing the current time. Thanks to the setState call, React knows the state has changed and calls the render method again to learn what should be on the screen. 
This time, this.state.date in the render method will be different, and so the render output will include the updated time. React updates the DOM accordingly. If the clock component is ever removed from the DOM, React calls the component will unmount lifecycle method so the timer is stopped. Okay, so let's switch gears now and turn this into a function-based component using hooks. But first of all, what is a hook? Hooks are functions that let you hook into React state and lifecycle features from function components. Now, hooks don't work inside of classes. They let you use React without classes. React provides a few built-in hooks like useState and useEffect. You can also create your own hooks to reuse stateful behavior between different components. We'll look into useState and useEffect, but I won't go into detail on these as I'll have an entire video dedicated to hooks coming very soon. The first thing we'll do is bring in our useState and useEffect methods from React. And here's the equivalent clock function component with hooks. The first thing you might see is that it's much more condensed and easier to read. And on the first line, we're actually setting our state with useState. So we are deconstructing useState. It has two values, the current state and a function that updates it. useState accepts one argument, and that is the initial state value. So we are setting that to a new date. Next, we're calling useEffect, which is equivalent to component did mount and component will unmount. Here we're setting up our set interval and updating our state every second using the set date function that we pulled out of useState. Now we return our JSX and include the current date from our state. Then we render our clock, and this only happens once, and the component is in charge of updating itself. Like this video to help me out, and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.